Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Right. I'm Malcolm Reed. Today I'm going to show you how I cook my never fail, super simple pork butt. Now this recipe is going to make some of the best pulled pork you've ever ate, and it's perfect every single time. I'm going to show you at the very end how I put together my jumbo pork sandwich the way I want to eat it. So let's get to cooking. So let's talk pork butt. This one is about an eight to 10 pound pork butt. That's perfect size. You want to make a lot of pulled pork. Now I've been looking for them for several weeks at my local grocery store doing the click and pull stuff. They never came through for me. So I called my buddy Kevin down at the butcher shop and he said he could send me some, no problem. This isn't anything special. It's just commodity pork, but I want you to check out the money muscle on it. Man, it's got huge money muscles. You could use these in comps. I know it's going to make some really good pulled pork. Now the first thing that I do to pork butt is get a little bit of binder on it. I'm just using regular old yellow mustard it rubs in you don't really taste the mustard as it cooks but what it does it helps me see where I'm putting my rub I just give the butt a good coat it don't have to be thick you just want something for the rub to stick to now we're ready for the seasoning and for this recipe all I'm using is one single season it's my hot rub you could use whatever you want but this one is all you need for a delicious pork butt we want a good coating it's gonna make a good bark on the outside. It's gonna give us a ton of flavor. And I can see where it's going because I have the mustard on there. I'm gonna pat it in gently. We're gonna do the same thing to the other sides. You wanna get the edges too. Everything needs a good coat of rub. So that looks great on the seasoning on the outside. I'm just patting it in a little bit. We wanna let it set here on the counter. Let that rub kind of melt in. Perfect time to fire up your pit. I'm using my gateway drum. That's why I have the butt setting fat down. When I'm cooked with a heat source below the meat, I want the fat on bottom so it acts as a barrier to protect the pork butt. Now that fat also melts, it drips down on those hot coals, mixes with the smoke, and makes an incredible flavor on this butt. If you're cooking it on another pit, just make sure you keep the fat oriented where the direct heat's coming from. It'll protect it throughout the whole cook. So to fire up my drum cooker, I'm using lump charcoal and a couple Royal Oak tumbleweeds to get the fire going. And just fill the basket up with lump, put a couple tumbleweeds in, drop it down inside the drum, open your vents 100% so air can flow, and light it up. It'll take about 15 minutes for those coals to get good and hot. Then I'm going to add my wood. For pork butt, I'm using hickory and cherry. I love that combo. Pork's got to have hickory, and the cherry is going to give it a little bit of sweetness and some pretty color on the outside. As soon as the pit comes up to temperature, I'm going to close the vents back, and I'm going to bring it to 250 to 275 degrees right in that range, and we're going to keep it there the whole time. So the drum settled right in about 265. I'm going to grab the butt here and we're going right on the rack. Remember it's fat down and I'm just centering it up. We've got the cherry smoke going. Smells incredible. We're just going to close the lid on the drum and let it sit in this smoke bath. It's going to take probably about seven, eight hours to get it up to 200 degrees. The first part is going to be all about color. We're just looking for the perfect bark on the outside. Then I'm going to wrap it up and get it tender. We're going to finish it off. I'll show you all the whole process. All right, it's been about an hour and 45 minutes. We're going to check on the butt for the first time. And you can see it's starting to dry out a little bit. We're starting to get that rub to really settle in. This is where you want to get some moisture on it. And I've just got some apple juice and cider vinegar. Real simple. You could use just about whatever you want, but I really like the flavor the vinegar gives the pork. And the apple juice is going to help it darken up just a little bit. And it is looking good. So we're going to get the lid closed. Keep letting it cook. So our pork butt's been on about four hours. I've sprayed it a couple times, but I'm not really worried about the time. I'm wanting to see the color, the way the rub set on top. You can't rub any of it off. It's cooked into the meat, starting to turn dark. So I've got some insulated gloves on, some nitrile gloves. I'm going to grab it off. We're going to go over to the cutting board, show you how I'm going to wrap this the easy way. So I'm just going to drop it down in this aluminum half pan. It's perfect size for a pork butt. We do need a little moisture on it, and the only thing I'm adding is some of my vinegar sauce. You could use whatever you want here, but I really love the way the vinegar sauce flavors the pork and it makes a pretty glaze on the outside as it's wrapped up. Now I'm just gonna cover the top of the butt with aluminum foil. This is gonna hold it down tight and the pan is gonna catch all the renderings. And last but not least, I've got my dot probe. Just going in the center part of the butt, making sure you don't hit bone. You want to go deep. That's going to let us know the internal temperature. That's what we're cooking to now. So we're going to set it right back on the center part of the drum. Probe wire's just running out the side. Close the lid. We don't have to add any more fuel. We don't need any more smoke. It's just about holding that temp steady. Between 250 and 275 is going to be perfect. And it's done when the Thermalworks dot tells us it's 200 degrees. 
All right, you can hear the dot alarm. It has reached 200 degrees internal on the port butt. It's time to get it off the pit, move it over to the cutting board. Now I'm ready for that facial. All that steam come off that port butt. We've rendered it all the way down. The bone's popping. I know it's gonna come out. And this is the hot part, taking it out of all these drippings. What I'm gonna do is transfer it to a little rack. And you wanna be careful here, because it is hot. It can fall apart real easy on you. So I've mixed the rest of the vinegar sauce that we had with the equal parts of the barbecue sauce. So it's got a thin vinegar element, but then the barbecue sauce sweetens it up, puts a beautiful color on the outside. And all I'm gonna do is just brush it over the bark we've created. It's gonna make a pretty sheen on it. Now I'm just taking the pan and all straight to the rack. All right, so I let the butt glaze for about 15 minutes. And you can see, I've got gloves on here to pick this pan up, but it has tightened up now the bark is beautiful, shining. The sauce kind of caramelizes and cooks in. Now all we gotta do is take it over the cutting board, let it rest just a few minutes, and I'm gonna pull it apart. I just let this port butt hang out right here on the cutting board, about 15 minutes. I just wanted it to cool down a little bit so it doesn't burn me through the gloves. And believe me, it is still screaming hot. We took it all the way up to 200 degrees. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is take this bone out. When that bone slides right out, I mean, that is a thing of beauty. It's a little bit of hanger on that one. I'm gonna get that. Mm. And how I like to pull it up is just start muscling it out. I'll just lay the muscles out here for you. You don't really have to do any chopping, anything like that. That money muscle will just come right off. I mean, look at that. Then you can go in here and take these other chunks out. I'm gonna flip it over to get some of the goody. This is the part that was on bottom. It has that fat cap there. But there's this beautiful layer of meat that's right under this fat. And you can take the fat and just kind of peel it off real gently. And what's left is this pork shoulder bacon or the butt bacon. And it comes off and it reminds you of that belly meat when you cook a whole hog. Some of the best meat on a pork butt because it's encapsulated in all that fat. There's a nice piece of it right there. You just carefully take your hand and wipe the fat away. You've got these beautiful strands of pulled pork. So now I've got the butt all muscled out. All I have to do is take these muscles that we pulled all the fat and I'm just gonna shred it by hand. You're just kind of pinching at it. That's pulling pork right there. And when it's juicy, when it's tender, it's so easy to do. And you can see the smoke ring that it has in it, the kind of pink contrast up at the top where that cherry, that hickory worked on it. And you wanna talk about moisture. I mean, look how much juice is left in this pulled pork. We didn't inject these. Now, if I was cooking comps, yeah, I'd probably inject them to get some more flavor in it. But when I'm making pulled pork at home, I'm not injecting anything. I want the natural flavor of the pork and of the smoke and of the spices that we use on the outside. That's what's giving it all the flavor. Ooh, that's some of that horn muscle right there. It's tender. When it feels like that, I gotta try it. I can't help it. Mmm, mmm. That's where it's at. That bite right there, melted in your mouth. That's what I want to see. I mean, just look at that smoke that we got in that piece there. One last piece. That's the rest of that money muscle that we pulled off, come off in one piece. And they call it the money muscle because that's what gets you paid in a contest. When we're making pulled pork, it just adds flavor to the pile. So check that out. That is a pile of pulled pork. So this is what I've been waiting all day for. Got me a jumbo hamburger bun. You got to have the jumbo for the large pulled pork. Need you some tongs. We're gonna put just a mound of this pulled pork on this sandwich. That's about a man-sized portion. We need a little bit of sauce, and I'm going with that same combo, the half and half, the barbecue sauce and vinegar sauce. I'm just gonna paint this sandwich, just like we're glazing the outside of that pork butt. Then you gotta finish it off with some good coleslaw. I'll put that recipe right up on the screen. Simple coleslaw. Trick is, get it right on top of that sandwich. If it spills over, hey, that's okay. We're not getting judged on this. Now that's what I call a Malcolm Reed style pulled pork sandwich. Y'all know I got a tri bite. We ain't playing around here. How am I gonna take it? Mmm. $12, maybe $15. I don't know. It's so dick I'm good. Mmm. That's why I cook barbecue right there. Thanks for checking us out here today at How to Barbecue Right. You gotta give this never failed pulled pork recipe a try. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to the channel. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And Shell and I are gonna talk about this sandwich, the pulled pork recipe, all the other delicious stuff we're cooking on our weekly podcast. Y'all check that out too. We'll see you next time. I'll tell you what, I'd have a hard time putting that pig back together. <laughs> 
don't mind me, I'm just gonna eat this pulled pork.